all the plans that we just heard to make straight his paths and every valley shall be filled, every mountain, hill, winding roads, rough ways. I, they, they didn't mention the waters. We live in, in Louisiana, a lot of waters, a lot of bridges. We need to build bridges in the water as well. But today, my brothers and sisters, how do we fix our roles, our relationship? Of course, it's not about physical connection, but also spiritual connection with one another, with God, with our world today. Some of us may be like to live on a mountaintop, away from the whole world. Some of us may be still stuck in an urban area, in a city. You know, in Vietnam, where I came from, if you have a piece of land in the city, you are rich. And people love to live in the city because you can make a lot of money. If you have a house right on the street, you can make a lot of money. You can make business out of it, and your, your family and your children's children, they will be flourished with money. But here in the United States, it's just opposite. Nobody wants to live in a city, and nobody wants to live right across the street from like blank row here. I live, my, my room is right next to blank row. And I'm telling you, even 1 a.m. in the morning, they're still raising cars on blank row. First few months, it really, I couldn't sleep much. But now, I even didn't care. I couldn't even hear anything because I got used to it. I used to live in New York City in the Bronx. 4 a.m., they pick up dumpsters and they drop it. You could hear it loud and clear. But here, we don't want to live in that kind of crowd. But today, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter where you live. The message for us is to connect with one another. I'm so proud that we, we have so many, I call volunteers, but it's not volunteers because they come back and come back so many times to our church, to our school, to help our poor students here with math, with readings, with science, you name it. They connect the dots from where they live to this beautiful area. So I want to thank you to all of you who did that. But today, we need to examine our spiritual dots, our spiritual disconnectedness in our lives. Maybe we fear of something. Maybe we so anxious of something. Maybe we're so greedy because we need more money. We need more food. We need more degrees. We need more time. We need a lot. But compared with poor people, maybe we have so much to share. But today, my brothers and sisters, whatever we do, we need to do it out of joy, with joy. Even to put on the new splendor of glory of God, do it with joy. Even when we fix roads and pathways, do it with joy. Don't do it with bitterness. A lot of times these days, we don't want to do anything because we say that the pandemic, the COVID, it just slows us down. That's true. But if we can drag ourselves to this church, we already had so much in our vein, in our attitude, in our life. That means that God already with us. We need to raise it up to the next level. We need to get out there and tell people that life is beautiful. I sent out a little song that I composed this morning to some of you, that you are beautiful. Now, some of you say, Father, I'm old, 
but you're still beautiful. Don't let your ages cover your beauty. Don't let your gray hair tell you that you're not beautiful. Don't let your color of your skin say that you're not beautiful. Don't even let your have no money or degree to say that you're not worth it. My brothers and sisters, I'm not telling you this is the new thing. This is from eternal, that we, each one of us, is beautiful. And on top of that, the day we baptized is the day that to confirm that we are worth it. We are beautiful. And my brothers and sisters, I'm holding this book because there is a phrase in here that we might be just ignoring it. John went out throughout the whole region of the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now, you say, yes, I received baptism, brother, but a long time ago, I don't feel it anymore. I don't remember anymore. But it doesn't matter you feel it or you remember it. We baptize. Baptize from what? From the original sin. Some of us still believe that we live in original sin. Some of us still believe that we still carry that original sin with us. That's why I'm so bad. That's why I feel all the way, all the time that I hate people. No, you are wiped away from the original sin. So forget about original sin. Remember that you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you're baptized to become children of God. If you don't think God is beautiful, then every one of us here, not beautiful. But because God is so beautiful, so are we. We are not just acting beautifully, but we are beautiful. We not just look beautiful, but you, we are beautiful from within. And some of us maybe need to hear that not just once, not just twice, not the third time, every day, a few times every day. I have a privilege to, to compose song. I have a privilege to say it. And you know me, I'm an Asian Vietnamese man. To say that you are beautiful, it takes a lot of courage. Because Vietnamese people, they don't even hug. They don't even kiss in public. To say you are beautiful, it's something wrong. But because I'm living here long enough, 27 years, and I learned English, and I love English, I think, and now they say that the way you say beautiful, it's so beautiful. If we say it from our hearts, my brothers and sisters, from our conviction that you are beautiful, people will believe in it. My children here in the school, when I say that you are beautiful, you are faithful, you are graceful to God, others, and all. You know what? Their face appears joy. Joy. They become even more beautiful in front of us. And so today, we need to remind one another not one time. Don't be afraid. Sometimes you say, I don't want to tell my wife that because and then she becomes so prideful. Just say it until she becomes humble. A lot of us, we say that I can't have joy until I have suffering. Don't wait for suffering because every day we have enough sufferings. And some of us already have too much suffering. So don't Wait for suffering to be able to enjoy our lives and to say, I have joy now. I believe joy can also come from gratitude. If we are grateful enough, we are joyful. And the second one, if we have humility to say, God, I want to thank you for creating me. 
I want to thank you for creating the people around me. I want to thank you for creating so much, even the bridges that I'm driving in Louisiana. Without these bridges, I had to take airline highways all the way from here to New Orleans. Without bridges, if you know, we had to take fare, what do you call that? The ferry from this shore to the other shore, and I did that in Vietnam. It, it, we had to wait a long time to get to our turn. Now we just go into our car, crank it up, put in a gas panel, and we just zoom in wherever we want. Gasoline is already there for us. Everything is ready for us. We need to be grateful and humble enough to say, God, I am so blessed. Thank you for loving me so much to my mom, to my dad, to my wife, to my husband, to my children. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve others. When we're doing this, my brothers and sisters, we are connecting the dots from mountaintop to the valley, to the, to the bottom of the valley, from east to west, from north to south. And with that, all flesh shall see the salvation of God because the salvation of God is beautiful. Do not be afraid of the coming of God coming on Christmas beautiful day. Yes, it's just a baby, but we need to anticipate and participate in this beautiful process that God becomes a little boy, a little Jesus, but that little Jesus continues to grow and grow in time. And so let us participate in this Advent and this holiday. When we put out the Christmas tree and lights this season, turn on the Christmas carols, bring in all family members so that we can do this as a community and sing a beautiful song together and light the lights so that let people know that we are joyful people of God. Amen.